everybody welcome back to about the popcorn thank you all for clicking on this video if you guys are new my name is stephanie and for those of you who have been with me for a while guess what's back ah, my claws <laughs> let's go ahead and get on with my review season five part one fuller house so you're not gonna find seasons one through four on my channel this is actually the first time that i'm doing a review on fuller house uh, mind you i think since i started my channel we are probably like on season three i believe when i officially started it so i could have i just never decided to do it but it is the final season it got the first nine on december the 6th uh, that's when it dropped on netflix so for me this very 90s like goody two shoes show works for me i'm not mad at it i'm not like oh so like annoying like why do they like resolve all their problems within this you know 25 minute period like who does that well full house did it and now fuller house does it and they're all like loves and hugs and kisses and like resolvement and friendship and family very very 90s you guys I stephanie finally had her baby with oh, hold on there's gonna be spoilers here okay there's spoiler spoiler alert okay then four ended of course with kimberly having the baby for stephanie and the brother kind of like phoebe from friends and now we get to meet the new baby and the whole like first episode was what are we gonna name the baby like there's no name for the baby she was giving her a little explanation on why she chose the name and everything blah 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 i was like it's gonna be daniela it's gonna be you know after the dad and yes it was after the dad and of course she has a middle name which is gonna be which is joe like dj so that way when she gets older if they want to call her dj then they can so that honestly i'm surprised this show didn't come out on disney channel because this really could have been a disney show like no joke just kind of like dj with her notary stamp that she just felt powerful like stamping away this show could have easily been stamped disney well, we really didn't get Danny, Uncle Jesse, or Joey uh, this season just there at the very end, but literally just like a small little cameo. The uh, guys ended up buying a sandwich shop because apparently this was their favorite sandwich shop, Uncle Montez, and they just kind of impulsively just decided to buy it. Now they're business owners. No, it's, it's working out because obviously it's like, 90s based stuff so obviously things are going to work out in this kind of universe but realistically i seriously doubt it because none of them have any kind of real like experience i mean yes matt does have his own business technically well well actually matt's not part of the business it's just jimmy uh fernando and steve and i guess the only one that would have the most experience would be steve i mean, remember if he has his own business or he works with somebody he may have his own business because uh, he's hardly ever at work. I mean, these people, they're at work for like five minutes. The realistic things about life don't really apply in this show because I don't think I've ever really heard anything about paying bills or being late or the mortgage or nothing. I mean, obviously, they, they well, we found out that they actually live free now. But I mean, there's a bunch of people living in this damn house. What is up with them always having the damn door open? Like, I'm surprised these people have not got robbed, you guys. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, again, different universe. Thieves probably don't even exist in this uh, Fuller House universe. Oh, it may seem like I'm like nitpicking on it, but I'm here for it. Like, yes, it has its flaws. Yes, it's ridiculous, but I really, really enjoy it. It makes me laugh. Some of the jokes uh, do fall a little bit short. But and then we end up playing like these really like elaborate parties, like last minute. Like, where do you get all these? Like earlier. Like, I think it was like actually episode one from, from season five when uh, Stephanie was supposed to take uh, Max to the Renaissance Fair and they missed it. And once you become a parent, you know, it's kind of hard to get out of the house. So she's learning this and unfortunately let Max down. And, you know, you don't even realize, but next thing you know, there is like this Renaissance Fair in the backyard. Literally within the same day. When did you have time to get this all together? Because it's like... You were having a hard time getting just out of the house, but yet you had time to book everybody, get all these costumes. This season, DJ nor Stephanie brought up Michelle. It was actually Max who brought up Michelle and was talking about her. When they were up in the attic looking for the uh, baptism chingadera that they needed for Daniela, and you see all like the old memory stuff from like Full House and Max just kind of goes into, oh yeah, you should watch all these home movies. You know, they're very well put together. It's almost like a TV show. Like, I really like how they kind of almost break that fourth wall. And they do that a lot throughout the, the series. Before I forget, the elephant in the room, Aunt Becky does not come out in this season. 
whether or not she's going to appear well no i think she, she i think she was full on fired so there's no way i don't know how they're going to um explain her absence in the weddings i mean maybe they're gonna kill her off because i feel like that's the only logical thing to do to her character and i did see that the episode was called proposal so i was like okay obviously this is when dj and steve are gonna get finally engaged the episode that i thought was the second to last it was trying to plan kimmy's re-proposal because fernando was all like well we've been engaged for so long doesn't even count as poly expired you're not gonna do it again and I know like for normal people, because even Stephanie says it, no, 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 that's for crazy people that do that. But for like Kimmy Fernando, like that's like a thing. Like we end up going to a flash mob, which is so much fun. I've always, always wanted to be part of a flash mob. That's like a dream of mine. And like to my future husband out there, because I hate when they do like public proposals. Like, oh no, like can it just be us? The only public proposal that I would except would be a flash mob and i need to be part of the mob and i know that it's a proposal and kind of be like what happened here because it's so awesome so that way i could say yes because otherwise when it's a public proposal like i feel like i'm forced to say yes like can i really say no i mean obviously i can say no but like i feel like it's too much pressure and like i would just say yes and then i would be like we need to talk you guys so i really did not even see this coming i cannot believe it usually i catch on to things but i did not catch on to it immediately i was just like oh my god so when fernando comes and he starts doing his little dance number and you're like okay this is this is what's gonna happen you know she, he's gonna propose mind you they're already married divorced and they got re-engaged and now they're getting re-engaged again Kimmy, from the whole story can some supposedly some accident happened and her foot was broken fernando comes and brings kimmy out and dj's like wait no 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 her leg her leg's broken she starts dancing mind you it's a different universe her leg could have easily still been broken and had she could have been dancing next you know she could have came back sit back down and like put her cast back on so when that happened and dj was a little bit confused i went "Ooh, i wonder and it was full on confirmed once jesse and joey came tangoing in and i went oh my god this is happening this is for dj where is steve because steve supposedly was like out of town Danny comes walking in and then she's all like dad and I wasn't gonna miss this your big moment and it's like oh my god you guys and the waterworks come you guys like they just like oh I was just like where's the tissue <laughs> like this is what I've been waiting for forever DJ is all like oh my god like we've been sharing our whole lives together what about if we share our most like exciting like time together and they all agree yes so we're gonna do a triple wedding let me tell you guys i wish i would be engaged they bust out with oh let's do a double wedding or even a triple wedding i'll be like <laughs> no N no the uh, closest thing that i would get to that is we can have our weddings in the same weekend That's so that is how season five part one ended there is not yet a set release date for part two but usually they kind of have like a six month like break so we make it something like in may or june like early summer but when i'm thinking it's season three when they did this when they did that part one and part two there was only a three month period so hopefully they go more with the three than the six months and we get it like in march or april honestly i'm not gonna lie it lasted longer than i anticipated it would because again it is a very 90s based of show and not it's not everybody's cup of tea it's just too pg to like goody two shoes what everybody wants you know in a show is what sex drugs drama violence but unfortunately shows like this you know don't really have too big of a fighting chance but i'm surprised like i said that it lasted as long as it did so people were watching it but unfortunately the ratings were going down so but i'm glad that they did give it a finale and they didn't just kind of but that is my review actually it's more like a recap of fuller house my unintentional video i'm gonna be doing the two popes after this and that's gonna be my official last netflix review for the year and um Christmas, I'm going to be watching 1917. That's going to be my last official movie review for the year. But I still have a couple more like end of decades and the best of 2019 to come. Before you guys click out of this video, don't forget to give it a like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that I post something new. And until next time, I'll be seeing you guys at concessions. Bye. I seriously always forget something, you guys. Well, Kirk Cameron does make a special appearance in season five. He actually plays himself this time around. I actually didn't realize um, until I read somewhere that he actually played their cousin in Full House. So I'm surprised that they didn't make some sort of like smart ass remark about, you know, Kirk Cameron and their cousin looking the same. I feel like that was a missed opportunity.